You're listening to the Rod Langway Fan Club. Welcome, everybody, to the Rod Langway Fan Club podcast. I am your host, Jeff Rollman, and we are here with a special summer summary. I'm joined by a couple of co-hosts, Mr. John Snowden. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be back here, even though it's sweltering hot in the summer. And Mark Chechnita. It may be sweltering hot, but I'm fired up about this uh, off-season edition and just glad to be back in the studio. Bit of a scare with COVID, but things are starting to get back under control here in Taiwan. And we have a lot we're going to try and cover in a short period of time. We're going to go over the NHL entry draft, the Seattle Kraken expansion draft, and the free agent trade market, which was absolutely insane. It was, but let's not forget, I mean, the Stanley Cup was awarded since last we spoke to y'all. So let's quickly touch upon the fact that Tampa Bay Lightning have repeated and are now Stanley Cup champions once again. Yeah, what an impressive run. They had uh, great performances by all their big guns. Vasilevsky won the Conn Smythe Trophy, and Kucherov once again led uh, all playoff scorers. It's got to rip open that wound again. Hey, guys, I was just recovering from Montreal, coming oh so close to their 25th title. But hey, it was a great run by them. No one saw it coming, especially not this guy. Well, you put out my Jets, and I believe you also put out Jeff's Leafs over there. Yeah, I did it by myself, actually. I'm pretty proud of myself. Yeah, that was a bummer. But uh, what a great run it was actually a lot of fun to watch for sure so let's begin with the nhl entry draft yeah well uh starting at the top the league's probably biggest embarrassment right now the buffalo sabers picked first and they now have two first overall defensemen they went for towering owen power yeah once again they go d um and certainly they need all the help they can get wherever they can get it uh whether or not he plays next year is an open question so i guess we'll see yeah, I mean, he had a he did not look out of place in the World Hockey Championships. I thought he looked really good. But if you're Buffalo, do you, do you want him in the lineup for next year? This team has been so dysfunctional again. Yeah, I think if they do end up moving on from Jack Eichel, they might want to have a distraction. And bringing in your first overall pick is probably something that can get the fans a little bit excited into what might not be a very good season once again in Buffalo. Yeah, I'd be a little bit nervous to get that loser stink all over him. Yeah, for mm. sure. <laughs> it's a pretty powerful stink. Yes, it has been. And number two overall, the Seattle Kraken make their first ever draft selection, and they choose American Matty Berniers. Yeah, so he was expected to be the second player chosen, although there was some debate over that. Uh, They went with the consensus number two, and I think it's a good first overall, or sorry, first ever draft pick by Seattle. I think that he's a pretty safe pick and should pan out as a top six centerman for them. Yeah, they definitely need some help down the middle, at least so far, uh, in so far as how their team looks right now. So, I mean, maybe he'll play, maybe he won't. Yeah, I'm really curious. I, I'm, I, I think he probably will play. He played at the World Championships. He also played at the World Juniors last year for the Americans. Um, but it, he was originally supposed to go to Harvard. So he's a smart guy. I think he's going to be a great face of the franchise going forward for Seattle. Sure. Uh, Moving on to the third overall pick, uh, you got to love alliteration. And the Ducks went with Mason McTavish, one of my favorite names in the draft. And he's another centerman. Uh, I think he's going to pair well with uh, Mr. Trevor Zegras. That's really nice one-two punch down the middle for uh, Anaheim down the road here. Yeah, they definitely have some young guys with Zegras as well. Um, And you're right, Mark. They love the alliteration. Troy Terry, Sam Steele. Yeah, got to keep it going. Anaheim's, Mason McTavish, They should yeah. change their team name as well, maybe, to some kind of A the An- Ducks. Anaheim Apes. There we go, the yeah. Apes. I like it. <laughs> uh, I like McTavish just purely based on the fact that he used to play for the uh, Peterborough Peets, one yeah. of my favorite junior hockey teams. There so uh, they say he's a decent center with some good size, too. And with the fourth overall pick, um, Jack Hughes was excited that the New Jersey Devils acquired his brother, Luke Hughes. I'm excited to see what New Jersey is going to do to try to bring over Quinn Hughes. They got to make a trade for him now, right? That'd be wouldn't hilarious. that be cool to get the three brothers together? I don't think Vancouver would be too keen on that idea, but wouldn't that be something? I'm sure they'd all love to be together there. And fifth overall, the Columbus Blue Jackets take Kent Johnson. He's a center. Yeah, there is a franchise that is just dying for star power. They've lost so many big names over the last few seasons. Hopefully he can pan out and become a top line player for the Jackets. Yes, they definitely need a lot of help up the middle after losing Dubois. I mean, they really don't have many guys there. Yeah, it was a really tough off season in Columbus uh, with the untimely passing of Matisse Kivlinik. So hopefully they can have a positive news story here and kind of get uh, the energy back up in that market. Yeah, that's right. They've got a new coach coming in there. So hopefully things start to turn around in Columbus. Uh, I just wanted to point out about how about this year's draft for the Michigan Wolverines? I mean, it's incredible. 
Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, basically, what, four out of the five were well, essentially? Yeah, three played for the Wolverines, and Luke Hughes is committed to join them as well. So that's that's unbelievable. That's never happened in NHL history. Yeah, so that rounds out the top five right there. Uh, I know, Jeff, you wanted to mention a couple goalies that were drafted. Sure, I love the goalies. There was two goalies drafted this year in the first round, and the first one went 15th overall to the Detroit Red Wings um, by the name of Sebastian Casa. He played for the Edmonton Oil Kings. He's a six foot six monster, highly touted player. And I know a lot of Oilers fans are disappointed that they weren't able to get their hands on him. Yeah, he certainly seems to have the uh, the pro frame on him. And then there was another goalie that was drafted, Jesper Wallstad. Yes, from Sweden. He was drafted 20th overall. And I think uh, Minnesota's pretty high on this kid. He's played some in Sweden. And I think they're thinking he's ready for the NHL soon. Maybe not now, but soon. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm not a big fan of taking goalies in the first round. I just feel like there are way more that are huge busts than those that pan out. And I know that's kind of weird to say as a Montreal Canadiens fan and with Carey Price being the franchise player in Montreal, but I just don't like it. I don't know. I'd rather go with a forward or a defenseman. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a big risk. But uh, Mark, speaking of Montreal Canadiens first round picks, uh, quite an, uh, an interesting one this year. Thoughts on that? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm embarrassed. This is a boneheaded pick. I mean, this kid's got a checkered past, didn't want to be drafted. You know, Logan Mayu maybe will turn out to be a great defenseman one day, but I think that all of the teams should have given him a year to maybe kind of get his life in order and then let him earn the right to be in the NHL. Um, I just don't see the need to make that kind of a pick in the first round. Certainly controversial. Yeah, I can't remember the last time we've seen a player say that he wanted not to be drafted. Yeah, and then for that to be ignored, uh, it makes the story even that much crazier. And more controversy on the way is the uh, Chicago Blackhawks made the 32nd overall pick. It was announced by one of the members of their scouting team, a female, but the Blackhawks are also a franchise that finds themselves in a lot of hot water. Yeah, it was a really odd juxtaposition. You have this um, convicted sex criminal drafted 31st, and then you have uh, this woman being used as a PR shield by an embattled franchise making the 32nd pick. Obviously, Chicago didn't know that was going to happen. That was pretty bad look for the NHL. I can't imagine Gary Bettman was too happy about it. No, bad looks all around for sure, yeah. Yeah, it's really disturbing, um, all the stories that we're hearing come out of Chicago. So, uh, bright times capping off the NHL entry draft there. But yeah, not without its controversy, that's for sure. Well, boys, should we get cracking on the Seattle expansion draft? Yeah, sure. I mean, I would say this was a little underwhelming in terms of excitement for a lot of us hockey fans. Starting with the fact that all of the players that were drafted were leaked hours before that big official, you know, they had that show lined up and the the names were coming out around noon Eastern time. So that was really anticlimactic. And teams seem to have learned a lot from Vegas. Yeah, there weren't too many side deals going on. None. Not a single side deal was made. Yeah, which which was strange. I think a lot of players, sorry, a lot of teams... Uh, traded some of the players they thought would have been exposed, and so they didn't really have as many choices as uh, I think they were hoping. Do you think Ron Francis maybe overplayed his hand a little bit and demanded too much and wouldn't budge off of those demands? Possibly. Yeah, and how about some of the names that were exposed, starting with Carey Price? I'm not surprised he wasn't chosen. I know that there were a lot of people that thought he could be taken, but that's just a lot of money to be taking on for a guy who's in the twilight of his career. I mean, I know he just had an amazing playoff run, but he's got a bad hip, bad knees, and Seattle's not going to be competitive for a while, so it just didn't make sense for them. Yeah, same with Tarasenko, right? I think they were sort of thinking the same thing. A guy who's probably past his prime, also a history of injuries, so they didn't they didn't bite there either. Yeah, you know, um, my, my team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, made a trade for Jared McCann. He was only a Maple Leaf for, I think, about 48 hours, and then uh, he moved along. So teams seemed to didn't want to, they didn't really want to repeat... Um, the William Carlson or Jonathan Marceso scenario again. Exactly, yeah. What do you guys think of um, some of the bigger names that Seattle did select? Let's start off with defense. Well, I mean, they're, they're the biggest fish they landed was Mark Giordano, who was, uh, you know, two years ago, I believe, or three years ago. Was it three years ago? He was the Norris Trophy winner um, and also captain of the Calgary Flames for many years. So big piece. I expect him to be captain of the Seattle Kraken going forward as well. Yeah, it's good to have a veteran leader in there. I don't know if he has much left in the tank, but uh, they did make a few acquisitions uh, through free agency on the defensive squad there. Uh, they were drafted by them and then immediately signed. So they got uh, Adam Larson out of Edmonton 
And they also got uh, Penny Alexiak's brother, Jamie. That's right. I mean, nice, nice big body back there. They really went big, Seattle. Yes, they've got Vince Dunn. They selected him from the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. They also got Yanni Gord. And we yes, knew, we for knew. the forwards, yeah. I yeah. would say Yanni Gord is one of the, the bigger names out there. Yeah, he also has a pretty big contract, though. He's under contract for five more years, over $5 million. So I think Tampa Bay, obviously not happy to lose him, but it's going to help them salary-wise. For sure. They picked up uh, Jordan Eberle and Tanev from yeah, Pittsburgh. Brandon Tanev. Yeah, both decent players, no question. Yeah, no frontline guys, but a lot of, you know, decent second, third line guys. Sure, guys like uh, Donskoy, for example. Pretty good. Um, Also active in the free agent market, they picked up Schwartz from St. Louis. Yeah, Jaden Schwartz, another guy who he he could score you 50 points in a season. And uh, Wenberg, former Florida Panthers, Columbus Blue Jacket. Yeah, for sure. They have, you know, a centerman, at least. That's nice to see. What do you think about their goalies? I mean, they got Drieger. Yes, that's right. They got Chris Drieger from the Florida Panthers. And uh, they signed Philip Grubauer. That was a bit of a shocking uh, signing. Yeah, and that allowed them to make a little trade after everything was done. I said they made no trades uh, before the draft, but after the draft was over, they traded Vitek Vanacek back to the Washington Capitals. Yeah, now is he really signed there? I think he's had some problems with the contract. I'm sure they'll get that resolved. Yeah, the contract didn't go through. A bit of a a bonehead move by Ron Francis, perhaps. But yes, I think uh, in the end... They just had to restructure it a little bit. It's not a huge deal. Just more of a, maybe a welcome to the NHL kind of initiation from Gary Bettman to the new kids on the block. Sure. (laughs) Yeah, exciting times for Seattle. I can't wait for their opening night. Yeah, the story is not yet finished, so there'll be lots of news, I'm sure, coming up over the next year or several years with Seattle. They have a lot of cap space and a lot of elbow room to move around. In a lot the- of NHL defensemen on that roster. They're not all going to start the season in Seattle. For sure, yeah. All right, let's get to some of these trades and free agent signings. What a wacky offseason. Yeah, it yeah. was unbelievable. So it's- much movement. Yeah, the expansion draft may have been underwhelming, but this season of change was overwhelming and my head was just spinning at the end of this and it's still going right now but uh the goalie carousel is the craziest of all 20 goalies trading places in the span of just a few days and perhaps uh none bigger than mark andre fleury yeah a lot of controversy surrounding this decision he wasn't even uh told except by social media and now he is a chicago blackhawk he is going to play it sounds like uh what a move though reigning vesna trophy winner yeah jettisoned for nothing just to get some money off the books um, not a nice way for Vegas to end their relationship with the guy who really put that franchise on the map. Hopefully he can have a great year in Chicago. Maybe they play Vegas in the first round and knock them out. Wouldn't that be poetic justice? That would be funny. Uh, what about your team, Jeff? I mean, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, yeah they basically, uh, they, I mean, it was free agent signing, but they basically swapped goalies with the Carolina Hurricanes. Freddie Anderson goes there and, uh, the Maple Leafs signed Peter Morazic. So we'll have to see how that turns out. Upgrade, yeah. what do you think? Um, yeah, it's We'll have to see if he can stay healthy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the big problem. thing with Morazic. He's a good goalie. And with Freddie. Healthy. Yeah, and Freddie as well. Yeah, Freddie for sure. Speaking well. of the Carolina Hurricanes, though, they jettison their, you know, super stud rookie goalie. Um, and Stevie Y uh, waves his magic wand and manages to acquire him. What do you guys think about yeah, this they move? Try, they tried to lowball Nadelkovich. He wasn't having any of it. And that's where the negotiations ended because they sent him packing to Detroit. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. And how about Darcy Camper going to the uh, Colorado Avalanche? Yeah. Well, after they lost Grubauer, they were in scramble mode and I think they got into a bidding war with the Oilers. We'll talk about their situation in a second here, but uh, they ended up paying a first round pick. Connor Timmons, who is, you know, a pretty solid NHL prospect to get a good goalie, but a guy who's only got one year left on his contract. He's going to be playing for a good team. And I mean, we'll see how good Grubauer is when he's playing for not such a good team. I mean, maybe Kemper is the guy. Yeah, maybe that's the calculation that Joe Sackick was making. Yeah. And standing awkwardly in the corner left out of the game of musical chairs were the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Once again, do not acquire a goaltender. They re-signed Mike Smith. Two years. (laughs) Yeah, two years. But didn't get any one of these uh, many goalies that were available. I'm shocked. I like I really thought this was the year there would be so many goalies available. I thought they could get one cheaply. And now here they are. They've still got the same two goalies that led them to yeah. a first round exit. And uh, I'm sure that they're still working the phones, but there aren't many options left out there. No, not at all. After seeing Connor McDavid's face there in the playoffs, uh, I'm surprised they didn't go all out and do whatever they could to get a, a number one goalie. But here we are. 
Yeah, they were quiet on the goaltending front, but they did make a splash by signing Zach Hyman. Yeah, too many years and too much money for a guy who's, you know, going to be 30 years old and has a history of knee injuries. I just don't think that this is going to end well for the Oilers. And uh, speaking of too long a term for too old a man, uh, Duncan Keith was also acquired by the Edmonton Oilers. I'm not sure that's the solution that Connor McDavid and co. were looking for on the back end either. Well, there's no doubting his list of accomplishments. He will go down as a Hall of Fame NHL defenseman. And for he sure. played pretty well for Chicago last year, but that is a pretty big salary hit they took. Cal- or Chicago did not absorb a single penny of that contract. Surprisingly, yeah. Edmonton uh, manages to find themselves on the wrong end of many a deal, it seems. Yeah, I also am not a huge fan of the Cody CC signing either. Um, I guess we'll have to see how it goes in Edmonton, but I don't think this team's me that much better. Some big name blue liners were on the move. We had Ryan Ellis. He's now a Philadelphia Flyer and uh, Risto Linen is also a Flyer as they upgraded their blue line. But two really big names in trades were Oliver Ekman Larson, who's now a Vancouver Canuck, and Seth Jones gets traded to the Chicago Blackhawks and signs a massive deal. Yeah, that deal uh, is a little crazy, I would say. I mean, what is going on with Chicago? I mean, they acquire Flurry now they have Jones, and they sign him to a massive deal. Is this Taves and Kane saying, uh, we're out of town unless you guys make uh, something happen here? Yeah, I do like uh, the Seth Jones acquisition, but I don't like the contract that they gave him. Nine and a half million dollars is way too much, especially considering the fact that Kale McCarr came in for nine million a year, and he's way, way, way more impactful on the blue line. And probably the biggest fish in the free agent pool for D-men was Dougie Hamilton. And slight surprise, he ends up with the New Jersey Devils. Yeah, I think he went for the biggest contract he could get. Uh, I guess New Jersey is a team that is on the rise. Yeah, they can afford it. Uh, they do have a lot of money still tied up in P.K. Subban. So him more and Subban. Though. Yeah, him and Subban are going to make an expensive pair. But $18 million defense pairing. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's quite worth that, but uh, most of the deficiency there is on P.K.'s side, I'd say. I know as much as you like P.K., but He's Mark. great. Yeah. He's great. I love him. Don't speak ill of P.K. And we had some captains that were re-signed on their teams as Alexander Ovechkin re-signs with the Washington Capitals and Ryan Getzlaff is back for another year in Anaheim. But perhaps the biggest captain of them all this season, off-season, was Gabriel Landeskog. And he ends up re-signing with the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, I thought that would be a slam dunk. And then it got down to the 11th hour there and it looked like he was actually going to leave town. Uh, Thankfully, cooler heads prevailed and he'll be back. Uh, And I think Colorado has to be the front runner for the cup this year. Yeah, I mean, we said that last year too. It didn't quite work out for them. I love Landeskog. I love their team. Uh, They still got to get over that hump though. And Landeskog will be a big piece of helping them do that. Oh yeah, especially for playoff hockey. He has that physical, physical edge that some of their other players don't have. Absolutely, yeah. What would you guys say was probably the most surprising free agent signing, whether it be dollars or term? Uh, I was a bit surprised about Calgary and um, Blake Coleman, the six-year deal. Yeah, I don't see how that works for Calgary. He's a good hockey player. You're overpaying with the Stanley Cup bounce. And does this really put you over the top? I mean, put the home, put Calgary over the top? I don't... By over the top, I mean, does that put them into a playoff spot? I mean, it, it, <laughs> Might, maybe. I mean, they could be in a playoff spot, but it he's certainly doesn't put them close to a Stanley no, Cup. He's sure. a Sutter kind of guy. I guess he's trying to get that Sutter culture back in Calgary. Um, I expect some more moves by the Flames before the end of the offseason, though. Another team that paid a, a high dollar for grit was uh, the New York Rangers acquiring um, Barkley Goudreau. Yeah, another Stanley Cup winner who gets overpaid. Uh, the Rangers just can't help themselves when it comes to the free agency season, can they? No, they always seem to do this, um, and it always seems to bite them in the foot when they're, you know, they're in the middle of a great rebuild, and uh, you know, don't waste your money on some of these guys. Now, the, I love Goudreau; he's a great player, but I'm not sure he's the guy for the the New York no, Rangers he's a this great year. Player, he's, well, a, he's a good player. He's he's a good bit piece. I mean, if you're building a Stanley Cup contender, he was great with T Bay, but yeah, not for a team like the Rangers. Yeah, it'll be interesting in a few years to see how many of these contracts get bought out. Yeah, speaking of buyouts, uh, the Minnesota Wild cleared uh, two massive contracts. Remember the year they signed Parise and Suter in the same offseason? 13 years. 13-year deals, both bought out. Uh, This is going to hurt them in a few years, actually. The cap hits are going to be quite big. Uh, They have a lot of room this year, and they went out and they used it on... Dun-da-da-da! Alex Goligoski. $5 million for an aging defenseman. That's what you do with your money for Parise and Suter? I don't know, guys. Yeah, I, it's sad. I mean, I've always liked both Parise and Suter. Uh, interesting to hear that maybe Zach Parise would end up with the New York Islanders. Uh, they've been a little bit quiet, 
and I think he would be a great addition. Yeah, I was not surprised about some of the buyouts, especially like, say, James Neal. I was slightly surprised about the Keith Yandel buyout. Sure, yeah, a big name, big name, and a very good offensive defenseman, so yeah. Um, but boys, I think we've sort of come to the end of this free agency trade journey, haven't we? Yeah, should we get out there and enjoy summer? Uh, we should do something with our lives. Yeah, but for all you hockey fans out there, don't worry. Uh, training camps open in about seven weeks from now, so we'll be back sooner than you think. Yeah, I always look forward to our preview show. Listen, everybody, thanks for listening, and I hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I, I, I hope you had yourselves a time. Hope you had yourselves a time. Hope, hope you had time, 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 yourselves a time. Hope you had, hope, hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I. Hope you had, hope, 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 h